So I'm going to show you guys how to pressure test a line real quick. And this is a perfect example because the lines are actually above the ground. You kind of understand the concept more. So uh, what we're doing is we're testing the new skimmer line, which is this one. And you can see it is stubbed up over there. So we're basically testing from there to here to make sure the line's tight. So what you're going to want to do to pressure test, you're going to need a pressure test rig, which we have this one here from, uh, I think it's Leetronics or Anderson Manufacturing, one of the two. Um, basically, it's got a pressure gauge, it's got a way to induce water, and it's got a way to put air into the system if we need to actually locate leaks. And there's a mixing valve here. So um, this connects with a plug, which lets the water in. And then the other end, I'll show you, I'll go over there real quick. On this end, we just put a solid plug. So essentially the concept is you want to cap off both ends of your line. So if you're doing the skimmer, you put a plug in the skimmer and plug off at the filter. If you were doing the returns, you'd plug the return at the pool and at the filter system. In this case, the lines aren't run yet. We're plugging it here and uh, we're gonna run you know, a test over to the system. So. so in this case, we're doing, we're kind of picking up a project from another company that dropped the ball for this customer. So um, essentially, a little background is these lines were already run. So we're pressure testing them to make sure whoever put them in did the right job, glued everything and everything's solid. Uh, we don't want to, you know, hook them in. We're here to basically hook these into the pool. Uh, we don't want to come and, you know, find out that these aren't, <laughs> you know, if something's not glued underground or we, you know, we hook them in and nothing's working right and it's, you know, pulling in air and whatever. So that's where we're pressure testing. So this is in, this is in as tight as I can get it. And this one as well is in as tight as we can get it. I'll show you the pressure test box in a minute. We have all sorts of different plugs. Uh, if you buy a kit, it comes with the different plugs. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put water into the system. We always start with water. And I'm gonna pressurize it up to about 10 PSI to start. So you wanna go slow. You don't wanna just open it wide open like that because you know, if it gets up too high, it's gonna blow the plugs out. It does take a little bit because this you know, line's gonna pressurize and fill up with water. So it usually takes you know, 30 seconds or so to get up there. You can always crack the line a little more. So I'm gonna slowly bring the pressure up so slowly add water until we get up to about 10 to 15 psi almost there all right we're right at 15. so as you see this needle's not moving at all um, essentially if this needle was dropping you know and going down we know we have a leak if it drops quick, it's a big leak. If it drops slow, it could be as simple as just tightening the plug or something's not tight. If you do tighten everything, it's still going down, then you might have a leak in the system. So um, at that point, that's where the air comes in, and that's gonna be a whole separate video trying to find the leak. Uh, you wanna induce air into the system to basically make the ground bubble, and then you gotta listen for it, which is a whole process and an entire different video, so. But these lines look good. Um, I usually start about 10 PSI, work my way up to 15, and then eventually close to 20. Um, basically, I do it as, you know, that's basically what the system's going to be operating at, anywhere from 10 to 20 PSI. Uh, so it's going to basically mimic the volume of water and the pressure in the system. So, as you can see, it's not dropping. So I'm going to let that sit for a bit, and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so it's been about five-ish minutes. Pressure hasn't dropped, so this line's good. I'm going to let the pressure out. Oops sprayed myself um, you want to let the pressure out before you pull any of these plugs you don't want to try pulling the plugs out with the pressure in the line because it's gonna explode on you so next we're gonna do this one which is the other skimmer the other side so I'm gonna take this out I'm gonna go down here need two hands for this You want to get it as tight as you possibly can get it. All right, now we're going to go over to the pool side. Pull this one. Like I said, if this was on the pool itself, you'd be plugging, like say we're doing the return line here. You'd be taking the return eyeball out and putting the plug in the fitting, tightening it up. So obviously these are above the ground, still a little different, but um, we usually obviously pressure test on the pool. So this one, I'm gonna take the cap off, plug in, and 
I'm gonna need to answer this, so hold on a second. Make sure it's nice and tight. All right, good. Now let's go pressurize this one. All right, so one thing I should mention, so we're gonna start adding water onto this one. Obviously it's at zero, so same thing, add water. Uh, one thing I should mention, if you are pressure testing from the pool, um, obviously there's gonna be water already in the lines, so they will fill up faster. So that's why where you kinda gotta watch the pressure build. Uh, this situation, there's no the lines are empty completely, so it takes a little bit longer to fill up. But if it's a pool, you know, you can already have water in the return line or the skimmer line. Even if there is a break, um, then you can start pressurizing. So we're going to go up slowly again like we did in the first one. So it's going to take a while, so you can even open it wide open if you want it first, but just be careful doing that. Just obviously check it every now and then. Usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute to, to build pressure, so it's still only at like 3 PSI. Like I said, if this was already on the pool and already filled with water, it would have already probably built up to 10 already, so it just takes a while. For all I know, the person who put these lines in might have already did this, but it's just you never want to take the chance. Anytime we do any type of plumbing work like this, we always, always, always pressure test before we do anything. Um, we put the lines in before we even backfill a trench, we pressure test everything. Uh, you just you don't want to backfill a trench, find out that you missed a fitting and you know misgluing it, and it's uh, got to be dug all back up. You know, it's, uh, we haven't done that, but it can definitely happen. <laughs> right, we're getting up there at about eight. Taking a while. about 10 holding so I'm gonna go up to 15 Right over 15 and we're holding. So we'll let this sit and we'll come back in a second and see where we're at. All right, been about five, 10 minutes or so, still holding, so we're good on this one, so you can let the pressure back. That's about it, that's how you pressure test. So, not gonna make a video on how to find a leak today, because uh, obviously we don't have one, but that's a whole nother process. Uh, you got this whole side of the pressuring to use air. Um, <coughs> essentially with a leak, you know, if there's a break in the line, what you gotta do is you gotta induce air into the system. It's gonna bubble and gurgle where the leak is, you know, there's gonna be a puddle of water in the, in the dirt, and then it's gonna bubble and, you know, make a noise. And then you gotta go along with a listening device to try to find that noise. So that's a whole nother process, um, mixing the air and the water to get, to get the right ratio. And that's a whole, you know, hour long video as it is. So this is just how to do a basic pressure test. These are real good to see if, you know, your lines are leaking, if you have a fast leak, a slow leak. If you just did new plumbing, you always wanna double check. Uh, it's really useful. Um, you can make your own rigs, uh, but I highly suggest just buying one. Uh, like I said, I, this was either from Leetronics or Anderson Manufacturing, one of the two. They're the two biggest uh, lead companies in the pool industry. So, but that's about it. That's how you do it.